From the campus studios of Saarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Hello, listeners, and welcome to the latest Ropecast. Hey, Peter, you're a little late. Well, hi, Roger. Yeah, uh, sorry, but here I am. What's this pile of books? Well, I brought a few dictionaries as samples because students keep asking me which dictionary should I buy. Ah, yes, the most frequent question. Yeah, the most frequent question you get asked as an English teacher, yeah. probably as a language teacher. Yeah, and you're a little bit older than me, <laughs> and I wanted to ask you for some additional advice because sometimes even I can't, you know, I can't say what to tell students. Yeah. Well, there's no simple answer, is there? Do you want a two-language dictionary to use with translating? Mm -hmm. If you want a monolingual dictionary, what stage are you at in your learning? Let's just stick to monolingual dictionaries, so okay. dictionaries with one language, yeah. in this case just English. And since we have listeners that must understand us, they're probably advanced learners. Okay. So advanced learners' dictionaries for those people. Yes. Well, out of the dozens available... I would reduce the list to just four. Four titles. Only four? Just four, yeah. For good reasons. Uh-huh. Why, why is that? Uh, because I think one of the essentials is that a dictionary should be based on a corpus. I think you have to explain what a corpus is. Right. That is a collection of texts. Texts here spoken as well as written English, current English, collected en masse and analyzed and made available for example for producing dictionaries. Uh, okay, so um, dictionary makers, the authors, they would, for example, decide, well, if a word is very frequent, if it appears very often, then they would put it in the dictionary. And exactly. if, it gets, if they see it only once in the whole corpus, then they'd say, well, it's not important. Exactly, yeah. Uh, okay. Frequency was one of the most important criteria. Okay. Other criteria for choosing a dictionary? Ah, yes. Well, I would say there are many modern dictionaries, but if they're not corpus-based, then not worth considering. But your Fab Four dictionaries are corpus-based. What else That's should right. I look for? I would look for, well, maybe go into a bookstore, mm -hmm. open up these dictionaries, see how you like the, the appearance. Can you, can you read the type easily? Yeah, especially if you're getting new glasses like yeah. me. <laughs> Do a spot check. Look for a word that you know is relatively new. And see if it's in there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Of course, you can you can look for the publication date. That's an indicator. Okay. So meaning relatively new publication is Certain. better than an old one. Certainly, because English is changing so rapidly. But they should watch out that it's not only a reprint of an old edition. Exactly. Okay, Roger. So tell me now, which are those famous four dictionaries that you would recommend? Well, they all have long titles. And three out of four contain the words advanced learners. So I'll just mention the publishers, okay. and then let's put all the details on the website. Yeah, let's do that. But yeah. still, tell me, which, which are the publishers? Okay, there's one from Cambridge, then Oxford, Macmillan, and Longman. Uh-huh. Th those are all British publishers, aren't they? They are. What's a guy who's learning American English supposed to do? Buy one of these dictionaries, I would say. Because, Aren't there any American dictionaries? Well, of course there are, but the situation in the United States is normally people living there, learning English in order to survive in the United States. They're surrounded by English, by American culture. Their situation is very different from people otherwise around the world learning mm -hmm. English as a foreign language. And the British concentrate on those p people? They're exactly that, yeah. Ah, okay. So, but they do contain information. I mean, the British dictionaries that you just recommended do contain information about American English, I they take it. They certainly do, yeah. Including, if you buy the CD ROM, American pronunciation. It's right there for you. All to right. Listen. There are a few dictionaries that come along with a CD ROM. Oh, yeah, but that's a whole other topic, I think. Let's talk about that in another podcast. Let's do, yeah. Okay. And let's say bye to our listeners. Goodbye. Bye. You've been listening to Ropecast, brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial. You know what's unfair? What? That you're a native speaker of English and I'm not. Well, you're a native speaker of German. Yeah, but we're speaking English. Yeah. That's your problem. Yeah.